Hi, my name is Victors, and this is another episode of... Guys, identity theft is not a joke. Millions of families suffer every year. We all know who the real host of Spotted in the Wild is. So, don't do that, Normans. Makes me stressful. <laughs> anyway, another episode of the Spotted in the Wild is here, um, a show where we pay you in Microtech merch store coupons to take a look at some of your setups. So, without further ado, let's take a look at some Microtech setups. So, the first submission comes from my colleague, Serhi. Um, and he sent me two pictures. The first one is based on 951G, an old school device with USB LTE modem. Uh, and together it creates a mod, uh, it, it is powering a video surveillance system that was working for almost a year uh, during some construction. So that's a very cost effective way. Yeah, nice and simple, hidden in a box. And um, let's look at the second submission from him. So it's an RB3011 in the server rack. And what I like about this setup is this little cable management add-on and I was thinking, looking at all your um, submissions, guys. So recently I started researching keyboards because my job is to type and I have a, a really bad uh, membrane-based keyboard and I started looking at the mechanical keyboards and very confusing. There's so many options, so many details. You can swap all the all the switches, all the keycaps, even custom palm rests. And um, why don't we see more stylish add-ons to the server racks? Like uh, this cable management thingy. Um, do they come like in, um, I don't know, gold edition? Hmm? I, I know that it would get scratched and everything, but I really want to see more like add-ons to the server racks. Um, I, I should research that, but I believe that uh, there should be more of those because you can really customize everything. It's 2023, all the solutions are customizable, right? Well, moving on, another submission from another one of my colleagues. And um, I hope you don't consider that cheating. Instead, um, look at it uh, as the opposite, like uh, you can take a peek inside the homes of uh, Microtech uh, employees. And uh, this is a picture from Walter's home. And uh, it's a nice chateau. And uh, look, the design of chateau, it, it, again and again, we see that uh, it's an instant classic. It looks like it came with the house, like it came with this uh, um, furniture. Mm. And um, what we see in Walter's home, let's, let's do some stalking. I see some Legos, I see a Monopoly, terrible game. And nobody knows the correct rules to this hellish game. And it takes a whole night to complete just because nobody pays attention to the rules. But there's, a, there's a, an art album by Janis Rosenthal, which we might take a look at. Um, him in some of the Guide to Latvia videos, but for now I will tell you just about one of his paintings because it also has something to do with Spotted in the Wild. So Janis Rosenthal is an influential Latvian painter and uh, this legendary painting is called uh, Coming from the Church or, or something like that. And you know what, what, the, what the absolute legends in, in the city that is depicted here did? They built some statues that resemble the setup of this painting. They, they built the statues of the people seen in, uh, in the painting. So if somebody resurrected this artist uh, and he were, were to take a walk in that city, um, he would spot his painting as statues in the wild. So there's that, some, some Latvian culture for you guys. But let's move on. We have a submission uh, by Anthony Armstrong. Um, I wonder if he's related to the legendary Louis Armstrong, you know, the musician 
probably not, but who knows, who knows. See attached picture of Microtech gear. I have more from a campground installation. I can provide that at another time. Oh, teasing me with more devices, sweet. But let's take a look at what you've sent so far. Look, we see some, I think it's CSS 610. The picture is a bit small. Then of course the legendary 3011 and uh, so many microstick boxes. But do you see the most um, curious part of this setup? Do you see it? The solid rack 10. I can't believe it. We just released it. I think the legendary video with Drew is what? A couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago, already you start you start sending us some solid rack 10 setups. That's great. Um, so very glad to see it. Thank you. And send the camp crowd installations as well. Uh, very curious about that. Next, a message from Tyler Hoffman, the CEO of Metro Wireless. So he writes, I wanted to share a fun project we did recently with your equipment. Here in Detroit, we had Tiger's opening day and we were the internet and Wi-Fi provider for one of the tent parties. Oh, I like a good party. We leveraged uh, 60 gigahertz plus five gigahertz uh, failover cubes to reach one of our um, ur urban POPs and got 650 megabits per second at over half a mile. Very solid, but uh, that's the cube product line. They are like that and you can reach even higher speeds. So uh, we then used the CCR router and the switch for the related wireless network and um, hard ethernet drops to offices, POS systems, a radio station boot and TV screens, all to much success and not a moment of downtime. Like I always say, zero interruptions, zero downtime. Router OS 7. Oh, that's the agent 007, huh? Zero interruptions, zero downtime. Seven. Great, great. I'm, I have this rambling gene, God damn it! I, I, it just keeps taking over my mind, but let's look uh, at the pictures. So there's the cube, right? There's some old school devices again. And look at this team, how happy, how friendly they look. And uh, can't blame them. You, you've had a great launch uh, with no interruptions, no problems, great speed, great weather. It's uh, the same as in Latvia, cloudy, but happy. So thank you for this and thank you for the human touch. Uh, it's not often that we get um, pictures of the of the people behind the setups. So thank you and uh, don't forget your coupon. Next up, very interesting project. It's called Network in a Bag. And you know, we have these miniature devices like the HAP Mini, um, some other ones. Uh, we've seen um, your setups with like um, battery packs with um, uh, the power banks, right? Uh, that you use to power some routers, even LTAP minis. But this time, uh, here's what Stefan writes. This is my network in a bag that I keep with me at all times in case I need a temporary yet extremely powerful, uh, good that you added that, a router switch or wireless access point anywhere. The contents of the bag, HAP AX, squared and the power supply, uh, a couple of uh, 32 gigabit uh, USB flash drives with um, Hirons and Windows boot, if you must know, and of course zip ties. Zip ties, we can never have too much zip ties. And, uh, and look at this case, it, it fits perfectly. Uh, it, it, it's actually it looks bigger on the inside, like it, it, when you close it up, it looks very small, but everything fits. That's great. So what is this case? The Telesim case is intended to fit a GoPro camera plus a few accessories. This is genius. This is just uh, using what you have in the best possible ways. This is perfect. And partially in frame is my tech burrito, but that's a different story. 
What is it? It, it does look a, it does look like a burrito, but I see that it's some kind of a mesh. So, what what could it be? Do you roll it? Uh, do you unpack it and you have some tools inside? Maybe some cables, but it looks rigid. Ah, uh, don't tease me like that. What is it? You need to send us uh, more information. And what is this keyboard? Uh, also, let me know about the keyboard because I'm looking for a new keyboard. So <laughs> this looks like one of the Keychron keyboards that I've been looking at, but um, not sure, not sure. But thank you. Great submission um, and a great life hack. So yeah, you mentioned power adapter, but could you fit a, a, some kind of a battery pack in this case as well? Anyway, moving on. Neil Nyvert writes, Victor, I really enjoy your videos on YouTube. Keep them coming. Thank you, thank you. Very like music to my ears. Uh, I will definitely keep them coming if you keep making comments like this. Thank you. So, I'm the founder of Wilderness Wireless. Mm. I have been using Microstick products for almost 20 years, since the time that Microstick was only a downloaded firmware that was loaded onto PC hardware. And that's true, and that was way before my time, but I know that Microstick started as networking software, like you could turn any PC in, in, into a powerful uh, routing solution. So quite, quite a long way from that, uh, making our own hardware and software. And I always remember this quote from, I think from uh, the Apple's Wozniak, but uh, I saw this quote in the movie <laughs> about Steve Jobs, so I, I, I'm not sure if it's a real quote, but he said that if you care about your uh, software, you have to make your own hardware. And it really stuck with me. And I like that here at Microtech, we do everything at the same place, the same team, and uh, I think it's really cool that we don't have to, to depend uh, on um, just, you know, some, some unknown remote uh, coders to make the software. I think it's good that everything is in the same building. Anyway, for your series Spot and in the Wild, oh wait, and you are the founder of Wilderness Wireless, and this is Spot and in the Wild. This is perfect. I would like to submit a project that we did in cooperation with the US Forest Service to bring internet connectivity to an extremely remote fire camp in central Idaho in the US. Oh man, I really want to visit US and I've seen so many pictures of your um, these uh, national parks and it's beautiful, gorgeous. And now with internet connectivity, I must go. So two of the sites for this project are so remote that they are only serviceable by a helicopter. So we had a very intense helicopter drop installation. Oh my, uh, th th this calls for like, uh, you need to get a raise, right? But you are the founder, so I, I guess you can um, arrange a raise um, uh, in pay when, when it is deserved. So the, this network has been in service for five years now and the radios are powered from PoE uh, with Microtik 960 PGS hex PoE routers. And due to extremely remote locations and extreme levels of snow in the winter, we run dual radio pads and set up traffic bonds in the routers. And uh, let's take a look at the pictures. Well, first of all, I really like the, again, uh, my favorite types of setups are these, where you see that somebody took just what they have and what is necessary without any useless, like flashy stuff. Just uh, a wooden board and screw everything down, but in a way that is really coherent. So this is great. This is like, uh, they should teach this stuff in schools uh, more. And um, yeah, that's cool. And also look, look. Uh, Neil writes, the installation was so interesting that we made a YouTube video of it here and we will show you some fragments now. And um, then you write, I think that this setup should hit all qualifiers for wild. Definitely, man, you, you set a new standard of uh, spot in, in the wild. This is indeed wild and I appreciate the video because, uh, well, if you look at the picture, of the installation, 
And even with the description of the of the situation with the extremely remote location, everything, I would have never guessed that it was so intense and so exciting, and such a beautiful location too. Really, thank you for sending this and for making this video. This is very cool. But uh, I wonder, um, are there any bears there? Because it looks like a berry area. So. Uh, and I've heard that when you go camping in the US in these locations that you have to set up like a fake camp with food for the bear so he stays there and he doesn't go to your camp. So is it true? And uh, who knows, maybe the bear is just looking for Wi-Fi and uh, now <laughs> more bears will come. But uh, uh, I should knock on wood. We have this uh, belief that if you want to avoid something, knock on wood. So, no bears for you guys, stay safe, and thank you for the amazing wild setup. This is great, this is, this is really spotted in the wild, thank you. Next up, we have Antti from Finland. And uh, I'm not trying to mock the northern accent, I'm sorry. It, it comes out na naturally because we have so many Estonians around and I've met a lot of Finland, uh, Finnish people. Uh, my neighbor is from Finland. Uh, next apartment and um, when she moved in I, I told her Kippi and she laughed because um, all the foreigners always uh, annoy f Finns with their knowledge of, of Finnish. Anyway, hi, Auntie writes, Cap AC, the official Wi-Fi of my son's fourth birthday. Oh, that's great. Uh, very cute. Besides this one, I also have at home a second cap I see downstairs, two cap lights, one in the garage, one dedicated for the smart home stuff, a hex as the central router, uh, cap span manager, and a CSS 326 that I don't, uh, so I so I don't run out of one gigabit ports. That's a solid setup. It's uh, it's actually you could power like a, an office with this. So, uh, going to replace the cap ACs with cap AXs. Good to hear. And the hex with RB5009s at some point to better utilize my 1 gigabit uh, connection. Not to mention the tens of CCR, CRS, RB, and access points we have at work. Oh, you're just pouring honey all over me. Oh, so sweet. You, you have a great setup, but the best thing here is, of course, um, your son's birthday. So happy birthday, a little, um, a little uh, man from Finland. Four years, is that um, a lot or is it not? Doesn't matter. We wish you all the best, great health, great curiosity. And um, who knows, maybe he will grow up to be uh, an engineer. Maybe not, but I know that he will grow up to be a great guy because uh, positivity and great energy comes from your email. Also, I know that Finland is one of the best places in the world to raise a child. So um, I will be, um, my fingers will be crossed for you, but it's not necessary. I know that it is going to be great either way. So happy birthday and thank you for the nice email and the picture. The next email comes from Vanumel and um, the subject, you guys are now, are you now clickbaiting? Is this like search engine optimization? Because the subject says, cool, super nerd tech, magnetic usage photo. Um, so I have to open that. Hi, we use RB 2011s in switch chip, fast, no CPU, wired, ultra speed configuration in our network but faced a problem. This router could not provide untagged VLAN on ports 6 to 10 in this scenario and only the 10th port can provide power over Ethernet. So here is a great solution, all in caps lock, uh, about the great solution, so it, it must be great. Split cable so, no you didn't, did you? Split cable so the Ethernet link goes to the needed switched ports and the power, pairs 3 and 4 in the cable are going to POE out port and I can remotely reboot Wi-Fi uh, access point if I need to. The photo is attached. 
Well, I mean, uh, if it's stupid and it works, it's not stupid. That's just, uh, again, some um, some nice old school engineering. And I, I, I remember when I was uh, when I was small that uh, um, my father also used to like. Um, I don't know why he did it, but I, I have a vivid memory of him just um, rolling these uh, these uh, paired cables um, from Ethernet cables, right? Just just tinkering all the time for some reason. So yeah, an old school solution, but it works and that's the main thing right if it works it works uh, who can who can uh, have any like objections if it works so yeah thank you for this submission moving on so um, uh, this one is a short email it says how it started and uh, ah no it ha it didn't it didn't load up uh, so it says how it started and then there's a picture of RB 2011. Uh, so many, so many 2011s. It is almost as if you guys are, are like um, clairvoyant, like you see the future because I'm not sure when this video comes out, but there are some interesting news around in the air regarding the 2011 product line. So, so yeah. Let me be a bit mysterious here. Um, so yeah, how it started? RB 2011, then upgraded to this lovely baby. And then there's a picture, oh, 48 ports. So it must be the CRS 354, am I right? Yeah, that is a massive and a very impressive uh, device. And also he writes, uh, happy birthday, Microtik, with love all the way from Kampala, Uganda, East Africa. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It was indeed our birthday quite recently, and um, we've got so many birthday wishes from you, and I will show you some of the uh, coolest submissions, some of the greatest birthday wishes in one of the next videos. But for now, thank you, thank you, thank you, all the love and uh, great energy to Uganda. So moving on, we have uh, just just two more things I want to show you today. I hope this video is not too long, but uh, the last two things are not submitted. I found them online, but uh, they're quite interesting. The first one comes from uh, Kodisa Telco Solutions on Twitter. Uh, do you see what they did with, with uh, the HAP routers? They mounted them uh, in, a, in, a, in a one U rack. So uh, I guess they it is either 3D printed or maybe it's just uh, even made by hand. This custom enclosure so you can mount up to three um, HAPs in a row. But again, I will be a bit mysterious, but we have a very cool, very um, valuable, very cost-effective and powerful device coming out uh, somewhere around now or maybe later uh, that you will be able to mount up to four of those in, in a single 1U space. So, um, uh, do you have any guesses? Can you guess what it is? Mm, you might, you might, but you might not. So, we'll see. And I've saved the most unusual submission. And in fact, it's not a submission. I found it on Reddit, which is like um, the Microtik subreddit is almost like the Microtik forum. So many Microtik professionals just sharing solutions to all kinds of challenges all the time. So check it out. So this guy made a wooden case for his RB3011. Just look at it. It is beautiful. You see the wooden grain and uh, man, <laughs> your wood gets me so excited. I'm like a beaver and don't take this out of context. Uh, you know what I mean. So, oh, come on, his, his username, Woodpecker Agitated. Perfect, it's just mwah, chef's kiss. This is great. I want all my routers in these wooden cases. Uh, of course, there's the problem of heat management, but uh, you have to make some sacrifices for the style, for the 
Do we use the word swag in 2023? I sure hope not, but um, yeah, it, it looks great. And and what is it in the background? I see a Keychron keyboard, one of uh, the keyboards that keeps popping up in my keyboard research. So um, yeah, I, I might buy that one. But once again, look at this case, man, gorgeous. And um, who knows, who knows, maybe there is a place for like these premium devices that would come in wood or marble or uh, I don't know, onyx, just all sorts of crazy stuff. But of course, um, that's not something that uh, we'll be making. Uh, we focus on cost effective solutions. But this is beautiful. Thank you for creating such a work of art. Um, it's really, it's really a, a work of art, uh, Mr. Woodpecker, agitated. Uh, I would be agitated uh, too if I had this device in my home. It's, uh, I will be rambling about this even when I finish this video. I will tell all my colleagues about this. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff. But that's all, this, uh, all the submissions we have for today. All this spotted in the wild for this episode. There will be more if you send us. Uh, your uh, setups, we will showcase them and we will pay you 10 euros in the Microtech merch store. So send us your submissions, uh, get that sweet Microtech merch cash and uh, see you in the comments, see you on social media and obviously on Reddit. Bye!